That's right. Finish up the book of Genesis. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Yeah. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Yeah. Only unto these men do nothing. To these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Uh -huh. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came into sojourning, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man even Lot. They pressed sore upon the man even Lot. And came near to break the door. And there wasn't, he mentioned the book of Judges, how they cut up the woman. Mm -hmm. But they wasn't pressing on the door to get women. No. <laughs> so what he would confer a reference to in Judges, in this, totally two different incidents. That's and right. Totally opposite is day and night. That's right. They wasn't pressing on Lot's house to get no women. No, no. no. The women was offered to them offered to the men by the father. Lot. That's, That's right. right. Now listen closely. And they pressed sore upon the man even Lot. And, and came near to break the door. They wanted to break the door down. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them. Yeah. And shut to the door. Uh -huh. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great. Yeah. So that they wearied themselves. They wearied themselves. To find the door. To find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters yeah and whatsoever thou hast in the city bring them out of this place uh -huh. for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. amen if their deeds was right in the eyes of God why would God want to destroy that's right that's right Dr. Knox you can come up if you like, brother. <laughs> Why do you feel as though that this wasn't dealing with homosexuality? Well, for the pastor, it's clear that, the, that there is tremendous sin going on here. No question about it. And that it is about sex. Mm -hmm. And it is about dishonoring people through sexual activity. That is so clear. There's no way to read the, the, the passage and not hear that. But what it is not about is a loving relationship between two people who God has for whatever reason, and genetics may be involved, whatever may, we don't know what causes this to happen to people like me. But I can tell you, what I feel for my partner is not a desire to humiliate him in the public street. Mm -hmm. That's what that story is about. So you're saying it's all right to have same uh, sex relationship uh, when you're married, or yes, I, I believe that there should be commitment, uh, and and you know my community really needs to wrestle with this. Uh, no, nobody, you will never hear me say that we should be. Uh, indiscriminately casting around sexual favors okay. uh, because every time you do you give something away that you don't get back all right it's valuable and precious God intends it that so way. you say that God your desire towards your male friend is the will of God then I believe it is all right let's balance it out with the scriptures and see who did God intend mm -hmm. for desire to be when it comes to marriage mm -hmm. man to man Let's see when that law was established, where the desire should be. Amen. Listen. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Listen. Unto the woman he said. Unto who? Unto the woman he said. Unto, now this is the dialogue. Is it God's will? And for us to agree whether a thing is God's will or not, you must agree we must be able to deal with the scriptures. Sure. Right? Sure. And so the only thing that would justify you today certainly would be the scriptures. Yeah, let me, because, let, me, let me back that up. Yes. Let, me, let me back that up a okay. step. I believe that God has given us, and, and this is what Paul says in Romans throughout the book, not just in one, you know, chapter, one, one uh, verse that we might lift up. Yeah. But throughout the book, Paul says, we have the gift of the Spirit okay. for discernment. All right. Not everything has been covered, you know. Mm. Not everything is in the book that we're ever going to confront. It was written by people who were slave owners or the friends of slave owners. Okay. And so you get a, a bias in the book 
that the rest of the story, the story of, of the, the coming out of the people of Israel, mm -hmm. flies in the face of. And you have to balance those things. And you have to ask the Spirit, all right, I got two competing things here. I have some things that say it's all right to hold slaves, and slaves should obey their masters. And some things over here that clearly show that God is on the side of the oppressed and doesn't want people to be in slavery. And at that point, when the book is not so crystal clear, one has to listen to the Spirit. All right, and, and, and I think that's more important than jumping from text to text and saying, you know, this is the, the law and we got to stick with it. Okay, so you say, let's listen to the Spirit. How do we hear the Spirit? We certainly hear it through study and prayer, but also in the congregation. Does the Spirit of God bring us anything that contradicts what's written? Why would God bring us something that contradicts what's written? What's written? and then send prophets and apostles to tell us to believe what's written. Well, this, this gets, uh, Brother Pastor, to a, to a place where I think you and I simply will disagree because it's a different of approach to the text, to the, to the whole of the Bible. Uh, no, I don't believe that God would, that, that the Spirit would, would contradict the Word. Mm -hmm. My point is that the whole Word has to be embraced. That we cannot take, you know, what amount to three <laughs> you know, oh, I, verses, I, 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 or even if you did seven, and say, you know, this is the last word about homosexuality in the Bible. It's not. There's so much more. Jesus, for instance, says uh, about in Matthew, and I wish I was as, as good as you all at, at remembering text and verse. I'm a little dyslexic, and I don't remember numbers in my head. But in Matthew, Jesus uh, says the sin of Sodom was inhospitality. He's very clear. It's a little short verse. And, and that, to me, counters um, whatever else we might say about the verse because my Lord said that. So, of course, I hear that with a different power than I do my own experience. But it is clear that, uh, that that's the issue so in that text. What, what Jesus was saying that the problem of Sodom and Gomorrah was they wasn't showing hospitality. And, and not just that. I mean, the word is so okay. often in the Bible, you, no, the word no. The word no isn't about, as you say, reaching out and shaking hands. It's, it's a, 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 a cover word. Well, it's I, a polite word. But, but what Jesus says is the people of Sodom were so mean and so disrespectful okay. that they deserve to be destroyed. Well, and, and that, I think, is the issue. Well, I agree. They were mean and they were disrespectful. But did they not manifest their meanness and their disrespect? and uh, not being hospitable by surrounding the house of one of those men? Wasn't that mean and it, disrespectful? It, it was mean and disrespectful, but, but let me put it more, more clearly, but, but delicately. I don't want to be vulgar. Oh, well, you, well you, you can be as sharp well, and as raw as you like. Yeah, but I don't want to be too much. You, you, you drew a good word, a wonderful word picture. You know, if you came in asking for pot and you got offered crack, you know, the, the point was the pot. I get that. But if a man in the street is cut off by another man in, a, in an automobile mm -hmm. and he uses the F word, he says, F you. Yeah. He doesn't mean, I would like to go and have consensual loving sex with you. Oh, I'm pretty he sure doesn't mean know. that. <laughs> The, the point is the disrespect. The point is the hurtfulness. You know, the point is I want to do two things. One is to, to have power over you. I, I wish I could have made you not do that, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel powerless, and so I'm going to say I want power over you. And, and pushing a man down and penetrating him makes him powerless in a significant way. If, if, it's, one, if it's a matter of rape okay. now, if it's a rape. Right. And the other thing is, I want you to have a female role, because still in our world, in spite of all of God's work and the Spirit's work with us, uh, we value women less than men. We're working on it, <laughs> but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. and, and that anger is manifested in not only, I want power over you, I want to push you down, but then I'm going to make you act like a girl. I'm going to do the, to the things that I can think of that are the hardest for you to take. So that, if he forced that upon him, that's wrong. Absolutely. So if a man consent to do it without force, it's right? It's a completely different thing. Is it right? 
It is, it is in my mind, sure. Okay. As, as it is when, when a woman consents to be penetrated by a man in, right. in the sexual you act. You made a key statement. You say in your mind. Would you agree that God is the best mind? I, I do. We plan, God plan, but God is the greatest of planners. Would you not agree? I agree. All right, then let's go by the scriptures because, see, if you say you're a Christian, that means you're Christ-like. I, I want to be. I work at it every day. And that, and that means you've got to take whatever Christ says. Is that right? It does. All right. That's Now, you're accustomed to being under these hot lights, I'm yes, not. Yes, I am. And you're accustomed to being on the spot, and I'm oh, not. Well, <laughs> well basically, um, now listen. Let's get this. <laughs> Glory to God. My, 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 my sole interest is, because listen, viewers and brothers and sisters, this is a message that he's sending to the public. Basically, that it's all right for men to have sex with men if they are married. Yeah. I can accept that on one term mm -hmm. if God said it. Yeah. Then I can accept it. How can you be a Christian preacher representing Christ, representing the Bible, representing the church that the apostles were in and preach marriage or the justification of physical relation in a manner that none of the prophets, nor Jesus, nor the apostles said it's all right to do? It, it really is easy for me to, to, to answer, uh, Brother Pastor. All right. The people who ask the questions get the answers to the questions they ask. And gay people have never been the powerful people in history. Never. Okay. And so the conversations that are recorded between Jesus and those who asked questions of him or to whom he was teaching uh, are between people who were... Uh, regarded as heterosexual. All right. The assumption was that they were, as it is in most conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, when I go into a conversation, everyone assumes that I'm uh, uh, non-gay, that I'm, that I'm heterosexual, okay. until they learn to the contrary. That's the nature of our culture. And it is simply not uh, uh, responsible for us to look for that conversation to be had in the Bible when there's no one to speak up for the powerless. For the same reason that women are disrespected in so much of the Bible, because they were powerless. The conversations in the Bible about them were uh, among men. But how can you compare women to two men being married? That's totally different. How do you mean? I, I, I don't understand what you mean. Well, if, if, if I sleep with my wife, I'm complying with the law of God. In the book of Genesis, let's read where the Lord said the desire of the woman should be. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Listen. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Yeah. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire. Your desire. Shall be. Shall be. To thy husband. This was established in the beginning. Right. where the desire should be between two people in a marriage. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you saying that you are justified by having your desire. You're, you're married, I presume. I'm not. I'm you're not, not partnered at all. You and your partner are not married. I do not have a partner. You don't have a partner. Right. But if you get married, you plan on marrying a man or a woman. I would marry a man. You would marry a man. Yes. And represent Christ at the same time. Absolutely. How? Because. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, right. and you must admit that your teaching and your deeds can't contradict the scripture. How can we just come up with something that's not scriptural? Again, Brother Pastor, it's, it's easy for you. It, it is easy, it's easier than it's ever been for me. And it's because, and again, it's, just a, it's a, a completely different approach to the, to the scriptures that, that comes out of our experience of being called by God 
to be in ministry or to be in, in lay service in the church uh, and fully experiencing the love of God in every aspect of our lives, understanding the concept and the reality of God convicting of sin. Now, I've been convicted of some sins in my life, and I've had to change some things. But not that. But not that one. You're not convicted of that? I'm not. I, again, I, you know, my ex entire experience is saying to God, I love you more than I love this sexual thing. I love you, God. So I want to serve you. Having Change sex with me. a man, you don't feel as though you're breaking God's commandment. It's a, for me. It is as beautiful and fulfilling and completing as I hope it is for you and your wife. For me. No, there ain't no comparison there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> With all due respect, Brother Pastor, you don't know. With all due respect, you don't know. According to the Bible. No. According to this Bible. What good is you coming up here with the Bible and don't believe what's in there? Oh, I believe it. You believe it? I believe it. But I, again, I believe all of it. And, and I have read all of it and studied as much of it as I could, could study with, with help from other people. Because the message of the Bible is one of uh, uh, love from our God more than anything else. And to have sex with men, is that showing the love of God? Well, let me, let me get through what I want to say. Yeah. Love from God is the point. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation to God first and then to each other is the point of the whole book, the entirety of the book. Of course, you'll be able to find a, a scripture here and a scripture there to, to prick me with. And you won't do it out of, out of lack of concern for me. You do it out of Christian love for me. You want to help me get to a different place that you think is better, and I value that. But I read the whole book, and in light of my own experience and the experience of thousands and thousands and millions of other gay Christians around the world who say... Everything about this book <laughs> tells me that I'm loved of God and that I can be empowered to love my neighbor as, as effectively as I love myself, to reach out in, in, in mutuality and, and concern and care for each other. Does, I can do that. Does the book tell the gay community that their deeds are godly? When a man lay with a man, does anywhere in the book Tell a gay man your deeds in that act is godly. I simply think it's unrealistic to expect folks who didn't understand anything about homosexual orientation in the uh, pre-Christian time and in the, the first and second centuries You're after Christ. They didn't understand it? They didn't understand what we know now. So the gay community have a better understanding than the prophets and the apostles. We are wrestling with the reality of our lives in light of the gospel and, and finding ourselves blessed and, and empowered and encouraged and loved by God. The scripture says this, whatsoever things were written aforetime is written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So if God intended and wanted men to marry men, it would have been written so we can learn it's right. Yeah. So how, how can you make it special for self? Oh no. And oh, saying no. that you are justified in laying with a man when you're married. How is that act scripturally, scripturally justified? Because see, we got it, God is involved in here. <laughs> Because just to say that it's justifiable for men to lay with men if you marry, would you convey that message if you got two 16-year-old boys somewhere and the government will permit them to marry wherever they are? You would encourage two young boys or two young men to have sex with one another? I would, I would not encourage people who are too young to have responsible sex to have sex with each other. I, 
Uh, so what the age? Sixteen year old. What piece, age? Well, would you say a man can lay with a man. I don't know. When, <laughs> you know, eighteen works for the for the consensus of the of the uh, uh, country. So eighteen. That, that people should be able to make decisions about whom they would partner with. Regardless of what the Bible says. Brother Pastor, in light of all that the Bible says. Ignore it. No, in light of That's all. That's what you tell No, I'm not. That's what you no, tell No, I'm not. That's I'm what not. you're telling them. No, I'm not. Dr. Knox, you are telling the people, in despite of what the Bible says, wherever you feel, go for it. No, no, no. That's what, what you're telling them. No, I'm not. What I am saying to you and, and to everyone else who will listen is the Bible encourages us, not encourages, but commands us yes. to love God first right. and other people as ourselves. All right. Now, if I love a potential partner as I love myself, mm -hmm. I would do nothing to dishonor him or hurt him or make him less than human. If, if, and, right. and all that I do with him should be done in the light of my mutual love for him and my love for God, just as I hope uh, all of you do in, in heterosexual relationships. And, and mm -hmm. uh, to say otherwise, is, uh, that is sin. All right, let me hold you on one statement you made, mm -hmm. that when you be with him, you, won't, you don't do anything to dishonor him. That's correct. Right. Let's compare your statement with the book. Amen. Let's see when he's with the man, is he dishonoring him? Mm -hmm. Even when he's being nice. That's right. Even when he's being consensual. Even when he agrees. Amen. Let's see, is that the act of dishonor? Romans chapter 1 and at verse 24. Listen. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness. You better go up to verse 22. At verse 22. You see, I just believe all the book. That's right. And... If we're going to believe what's in the book, mm -hmm. it's the purpose of, you know, you go to church, it's preachers, you know, they claim they got Bibles up on the podium. If you're not going to believe what's in there, there's no need to have it up there. That's right. Listen closely. Proverbs, uh, rather Romans chapter 1 and verse 22. Listen. Professing themselves to be wise, yeah. they became fools. What is it? And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God uh -huh. into an image made like to corruptible man. Yeah. And the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to what? To uncleanness. Now, the Bible establishing an act that's unclean. Mm -hmm. All right. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness uh -huh. through the lust of their own hearts. The lust, the desires of their own wants, their heart. To dishonor. To dishonor. Their own bodies. Their own bodies. Between themselves. Between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Holy. The truth is the woman was made for the man. That's right. That's the truth. Yeah. And the scripture says you seek to change it. Change it. That's right. Now if you're changing it, you're making man for man, woman for woman. The yeah. scripture says they seek to change the truth of God. Of God into a lie. Into a lie. Amen. Listen. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves, mm -hmm. who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Who is what? Who is blessed forever. Amen. As a result of that, what did God say? For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. What is that vile affection that God is speaking of? For even their women did change the natural use into that which Hold is... Hold it. What is the natural use? Amen. The natural use for the woman is what? The man. man. And the scripture dealing with changing natural use. That's right. Listen. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Against nature. That's written. Do you believe that? That if a man loveth the man or a woman with a woman, it's against nature. I do not believe it. So this is a lie. That is not true. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. That's what Be you're doing. Because I don't believe that the Apostle Paul had any concept, any concept. Paul? Paul had mean, any concept. Uh, no, no, let me finish. Go ahead, go ahead and finish, Doc. Uh, let, let me tell you one thing first and foremost. Yeah. I'm not a... I'm not a, a 
doctor of ministry or a PhD. I don't oh. know where we decided I was Dr. Knox. I appreciate the honor, but it's not due me. I didn't earn it. How about it. just Harry? Good old Harry would be right. fine. <laughs> All right, come on. Paul did not have any idea of the, the kind of love that I feel for a partner when I am partnered. He didn't, he didn't know what that was about. Now, it, you know, it's easy for you to laugh it off because for you it seems most natural. It is for you natural. No, you know, no, wait, no, 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 come on now, come on. I don't want you to misinterpret what I'm laughing about. Well, I, I don't take it personally. I don't, I don't hear you laughing at me, but, but, but let me say this. All right, go ahead. You consider it unnatural because it's not natural for you. It ain't natural for God. Oh, the straight man, the heterosexual man who got the privilege of writing the book, the educated, rich, heterosexual man, Paul, who got to write the book, mm -hmm. didn't think it was natural, because for him, it must not have been. So you see he wrote it on his own? I'm telling you, for me, it is natural. All right. And when, that, when those two things disagree, when my experience, not outside of the love of God, but inside the love of God and constant companionship with God, constant talking with God about it, begging God to make it different. If it's wrong, God, everybody else says it is, and I don't want to do this. Change me. Not being changed. Not even being changed a little, but in fact being embraced by the love that says, I made you this way. And he's all right to do it. And it, not only all right, it's God's will. It's God's will for you it's to lay God's with a man. Will. For me saying. to lay with a man if he and I love each other and care for each other and are committed to each other. All right, now, let me, now I have to say, I, I wish I could say, I wish it were as easy as turning to my book in the Bible that was written by one of my people, you know, that was, that was, uh, uh, written to really address this issue. I wish it were that easy. So you're saying that Paul was just closed-minded and just didn't have no understanding about gay issues at all. I totally right. disagree. Amen. Because the book says this. Give me the book of uh, Romans. Let's see how the scriptures come about. Amen. The book tells us, in fact, it lets us know, we're going to go to Romans, then we're going to go to Peter, that all scripture, all of the scripture, not some of it, but all scripture are given by the inspiration of God. And it's on, listen at this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And at verse 16. And verse 16. All scripture. How much? All scripture. All scripture, how they come about? Is given by inspiration of God. It ain't talking about a bunch of rich men. A bunch of male chauvinist men, That's right. or heterosexual, that was irrelevant. That's right. It says all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And when we use the inspired scripture, what do we formulate? And it's profitable for doctrine. When you stick with the scriptures, your doctrine will be right. For reproof. Your reproof will be correct. For correction. What? For correction. 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 What else? For instruction. Instruction. In righteousness. In what's right. That the man of God may be perfect. Complete. Thoroughly furnished well, unto so, all good works. So Paul didn't write that on his own. Mm -hmm. You can't say that Paul wrote it on his own. He was divinely inspired. Knowing this first. The Bible said knowing this first. In 2 Peter chapter uh, 1 and verse 20. Listen. Knowing this first. I, it's the first thing that God wants you to know. Knowing this first. That what? That no prophecy of the scripture. No prophecy. No prophecy. Nothing written in the scriptures. Is of any private interpretation. So you can't say Paul wrote it on his own. Now, Brother Pastor. The last thing that I would say about Paul was that he was not inspired by God and a, and a man of God and that the words that he wrote were put down for our uh, use and edification, not our use on our own behalf, but for God's use in telling us how to live our lives. So, you and I agree about that. Now, yes, let, me, yes, let, me, let me have my turn. Go ahead, brother. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that are contradictory to other things in the Bible or 
for which we feel we ha or beyond which we feel we have grown in our understanding of a simplistic interpretation. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, if you're going to condemn my folks to hell now, this is serious business. This is not just you and I disagree about a political topic or something like that. You and I understand that the, 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 the stakes are the highest. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tell me that my people are going to hell based on uh, these things, which again, I gave other uh, information about that is not as simplistic as how you've laid it out but here. But before you lay but, it on me, but, but, no, I'm going to take no, me you. out of it. No, I want to ask you, because uh, it's important to remember. Okay. What do you say about a scripture that says, slaves obey your masters? Mm -hmm. It's simple. It's to the point. It's clear. Mm -hmm. What, what do you say about something like that? Let me give you some other examples. I don't want you, I'm sure you got an answer to that one, but let me yeah, give you some I others, do. I'm sure. <laughs> now, let me give you some others. Yeah. What do you say to the holiness code when it says, don't eat lobsters and shrimp? Yeah. It's an abomination. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the holiness code when it says, don't have sex with your wife who you love when she's menstruating? Mm -hmm. It's an abomination. Mm -hmm. What do you say uh, Anything you, know, you pitch, to, we can do. Okay. I mean, all of those things, uh, you, I believe, I don't want to pitch them at you by way of embarrassing you or making you lose a point in this debate. Okay? I'm, not, I don't, I, I'm I, not trying to embarrass you. I, I, well, I know. But, but, okay. but, but what I say to you about that is this. Why I say it is this. You, I believe you have to hear all of those texts in light of everything else is in, that's in the book, mm -hmm. that's in the Bible. All of the messages of God standing on, the, on the, the side of people who are misunderstood or powerless or strangers. All of the things that, that, that the Bible says about Jesus' decisions to eat with people who were sinners right. and, and not to justify their sin, I don't say that, but you know, to, to say to people, come and be with me. Exactly. You know, uh, I know you're not understood by everybody else, but I understand you. Mm -hmm. what, all of that has to be a part of the mix. The love of God, the, the, not just the condemnation of sin. God will convict us. If, if, if we're wrong, God will convict us in our hearts. Mm -hmm. The other piece that for me is a proof, not just what's in the text, the so other saying, things you don't that are take what's just in the scriptures. No, I don't. What, and, what, and, I, and you and I probably disagree about you this. You go outside I'm the scriptures to justify yourself. I, I justify things that I believe in f through four different things. What are they? The scriptures are first, always. The tradition of the church, what we have learned from being the body of Christ together for many, many centuries. Mm -hmm. My experience, my experience, I believe, is a gift of God to me and to all of us. And God says that it is. Mm -hmm. And the reason that God has given me, the, the ability to reason and think things through. All four of those things from my tradition, the Wesleyan tradition, the United Methodist tradition in which I grew up, have value, not equal. Not equal. The scriptures are more important. The, the spirit is more important than experience or reason. But all of those things are important. And it's just not kind, finally, well, you for people who... Yourself. I'm not. If you're saying the scriptures is more important than more all important. the things that you just mentioned, then why do you diminish the importance of the scriptures? I don't diminish by saying it. you don't believe them. I, oh, I don't. I don't say that. What I'm saying is, when I studied Romans, I didn't stop with 126 and 27. We're not going to stop. I went through the whole thing. You yeah. know, when I studied Leviticus 18:22, I studied the whole holiness code, yeah. and what I learned about it was God calls us to be special and chosen to be to live differently from the people who are not believers You're around us. You're saying God have chose the gay community to live differently? No, by us I mean believers. All, all of us who are Christians. So a, a Christian is supposed to live their life like Christ? As much as we can, sure. So if we're going to strive to live like Christ, was Christ gay? Christ was not married. Christ, you know, Christ, as far as I can tell in the scriptures, never had sex with anyone. Does we don't know that. Does the, say, does the scripture teach that Christ will marry the church? It does. It's, it does. Is the church called wife? Uh, yes, by authors. 
again, by authors who understood a, a, a male-dominated society, so I, I, with which I, I simply don't think the if Bible takes If you want to deal with Christ marrying, we can deal with that. The scriptures talk about how Christ will present unto himself a glorious church, right. and it compared the presentation of the church to Christ, Christ. and compared to the presentation of Eve to Adam, does it not? It does. So if it was God's will for men to sleep with men, for the Christian community that are looking, mm -hmm. to the gay community that are listening and watching, all we're asking is if, if it's God's will, and if it's justified by heaven, because there is no greater justification than what comes from heaven. Yeah. That's right. Then let us go to the scriptures and see where do God justify us. You keep telling me that this is uh, I feel as though, I feel as though. Give me the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. I want to compare his feelings with God's feelings. Mm -hmm. I want to compare his thoughts with God's thoughts. Amen. I want to see does God feel about things the way he does. That's right. Let's listen to what God said. Yeah. Amen. God Almighty said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Are not. Are not. Isaiah chapter 55. 55. Isaiah chapter 55 and we'll begin in verse 7. Listen. Let the wicked forsake his way. You hear that? Let the wicked leave his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Now you're referring to your thoughts and saying that you think that you're justified to do this. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said forsake your thoughts. That's right. Listen. And let him return unto the Lord. Go to the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And he'll be merciful unto you. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Yeah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. God don't think like you do. Let me, let me give you Jesus' word on this. In, in Luke 12, the Pharisees come at him with this kind of an argument. Okay. They're going to try to trick him. They're going to try to trip him up. All right. And he tells them a parable. Mm -hmm. And then finally in frustration, it's, it's clear from the way that the text is written, he looks at him and he says, why don't you just judge for yourself what is right? Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus says? That's what Jesus says. And what he means by that is not based on your own desires, of course. Mm -hmm. But he says, I've been telling you the truth. I've been telling you the truth. And of course you're going to find a way to trip somebody up. So you're saying you're but telling Jesus me the truth says, and I'm trying to find a way to trip you up. That's what you're saying? I believe anybody who would watch from my, uh, this program, from my perspective, would think you're trying to trip me up. Well, but, I, that's, but that's not, all right. Not, Again, let, me, let me make it clear. No, this no, no. This is not what I'm trying to do. All, out, out of this whole discussion, I'm the only one running to the scripture to justify what I'm saying. And brother, I'm not trying to trip nobody up. And brother Pastor, I am not saying to you that I feel an, at all defensive about this. I don't feel uh, afraid or, or worried about all, uh, all, any of this. I serve a Christ who is alive, who is alive. Everything Christ intends to say, Christ has not yet said. I don't believe it. I see the evidence. I see the evidence in the early church. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the Bible. Let me take my little proof text. I go to Acts 10. Right. I go to Acts 15. Mm -hmm. And people there have this kind of conversation with each other. And the, and the Jewish Christians, the Jerusalem Christians say, it's clear in the book. It's clear in the book. You must be circumcised. You must be. Mm -hmm. You cannot eat all of these certain kinds of foods. It's clear in the book. And they, they do this kind of conversation. And Peter stands up and he says, friends, it just doesn't match with my experience of Cornelius. And Paul and Barnabas come down from Antioch and, and, and Cilicia and they say, it doesn't match with our experience there. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles are filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't believe the work that's going on there. And they're so excited about it that the, 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 the Jerusalem church picks up a delegation and they send them off to Cilicia and Syria and, and, and Antioch to see the great things that are happening. Now, for the pastor, Jesus says, why don't you decide for yourself? We've given you all of this mm -hmm. teaching. All of it. And you're going to be better than I am at finding another text, another text, another text. You are. I'm telling you. What's the job of in, the minister? Isn't the it, job of the minister is to point the people to the scriptures? 
It is. It and is I, our job to get up and give opinions and personal views, how we feel as though, what should be, what shouldn't be. If we say we're ministers of Christ, it is our job to take the people to the scriptures so they can believe. It is, but it's also our job. It is also clearly our job to invite the Holy Spirit into the, into the mix, into the conversation. Well, if I'm in the scripture it, and I'm dealing with the Holy Spirit, Jesus said the words that I spake unto you, they are spirit and they you are life. Are, but you, but I, you and I simply disagree if you believe that the Spirit stopped speaking when the Roman church decided in the fourth century that this was the book we were going to have. God did not stop. No, 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 no. God did not stop speaking to us, though. God, in the tradition of the church, mm -hmm. said to us, this is enough now. It's not everything. It's not every single word it does. It says there's all that you need here. That's how I hear the text that, that you had read. All right. Everything you need is here. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to say we prescribe these things for every issue. I've got a prescription for every single thing that's going to come up. What it says is, and Jesus in his great promise as, as he's ready to ascend says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you to your own devices, and I'm not going to leave you just with what you've got by way of Scripture to lean back on. Because the people he was talking to didn't even have the Scriptures at that time. So what did Jesus left for? The Comforter, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, the Comforter. And he said, look, it's here. I am, not it, I he am left the here Spirit, right? through the Spirit. And I'm telling you, Brother uh -huh. Pastor, yes. <laughs> I hear the love that you have for gay people and your call to repentance. I hear it. I feel it. You and I have talked before today. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't confident in, in your concern for all of us. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be here. I simply wouldn't have dignified the meeting with my, with my presence, you know. But Jesus has been talking to us. And we're bringing you a message like Paul brought, well, like please, Peter brought to the... Please read to us what Jesus is telling y'all. Paul and Peter... Read it to us. I'm That's telling, all I'm at you. Listen to what I'm saying. Paul and Peter didn't have a text to read either. Well, they well, said the thing to, is, they they're said not here to the now. I know. You're here. The scriptures they, are already written. So if Jesus is talking to you, and to say Paul of them didn't have a text, yes, they did. They had the prophets. That's right. They did. They had the prophets, and it was written. They did. Now, if you say Jesus is talking to you now then please show the world where Jesus is talking to you from. He's talking to me from the entirety of the book, Brother Pastor. All from right. the entirety so of the book. Did he say anything to you that it was all right for you to lay with the man somewhere in the book? Being that he's talking to you from the entirety of the book, right. just show me one little section of the book and let Jesus talk. Amen. Jesus talk. Harry. I'm saying to you, Brother Pastor. I want to hear him, Harry. Brother Pastor, I do not, I, I cannot point to a place in the book, and I would not presume to tell you that I could. Then how can you just talk about God so loosely and then say that it is justified in God's eyes? How can you say that about God? Uh, Listen, I, this is very serious. It man. is very serious. Harry, God is not a man. That's right. And we right. can't deal with him like he is a man. That's right. So how can you just say, well, God is pleased with me? How do you know? The Bible said prove all things. Oh, That's right. And the scripture is called this a infallible proof. proof. Wow. So you just can't off the wall and say, well, it's all right with God. How do we know? Yeah. This, uh, Brother Pastor. Come on, Harry. You got to do my, better than that. My, I, I'm Your doing, soul is at stake. My soul is at stake, and I have staked my soul on this, on what I'm about to say to you. All right. I've read the whole book. Understandest what thou readest? I have read the whole book. Mm -hmm. I have sought understanding. I haven't stopped with just the English translation. I haven't stopped with just what my, my one pastor said you to read me. Greek? I, I read enough of it to make it work. Does, not, does Greek justify men with men? What Greek, what Greek says to me is that the places in the book that, that are used against us are not as clear as a lot of people want to make them out to be. Now, I said in the Leviticus Code, it's clear. Mm -hmm. 
but it was a matter of purity for the Jews for which we simply don't ask people, we, or about which we don't ask people to live up anymore, to which we don't ask people to live up anymore to all of those, that long list of things. But we can deal with one thing. Well, but you're dealing with the thing that applies to me and not to you. No, now, don't now apply to me. you know, Pastor Jennings, I've got to come back and say, yeah. we have to hear this in community. This message has to be heard in community with our brothers and sisters. Where the message is going to come from? The message is going to come from the book. Where? From the whole book. Where? I don't, well, we must, be, we must be on a circuitous route. Let's, let's back up. I am not saying to you that non-gay people, that heterosexual people mm. who didn't have an understanding of what homosexual orientation is or is about, sat down and included us in the book. They simply did not. You're not in the book. The, in the book. Not, not, in, not, in the book. not specifically. No? Not specifically. All right. As, no, by right. that I mean to justify uh, sexual activity between men. I'm not going to say that it's there. Well, what I'm saying to you is there are more overriding principles in the book that we use for every other topic under the sun except this one. The church is holding gay people to a higher standard a different standard oh, 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 than it is oh, oh. on I, I lots of other issues. How is how are you being held to a different standard? The standard of God was woman made for the man. That's right. That was God's standard. You trying to produce and uphold a different standard. Right. I'm trying to just deal with the standard that God have already established. You and your community is trying to bring about, in fact, Paul said, to change mm -hmm. that which is against nature. You're trying to change it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if it's God's will, then it should be all right for me to do it. it it's, well, it should be all right for you to do it if it's natural for you to do it. If it is it is well, your if it, orientation. If it's natural, wouldn't, wouldn't God have allowed natural men mm -hmm. in the book to do such an act? Because you must admit, everywhere in the book where the act is done, God wants to destroy them. God yeah. is against it. God sent the prophets or an apostle or a messenger to speak out against it. That's right. Where in the... All right, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Being that you just don't want to deal with the Bible, let's deal with other books. Right. You familiar with the Quran? I'm not. Well, the Jews use the Old Testament, the Torah. Are you familiar with that? Uh -huh. Is it anywhere in the Torah, or as the many Christians say today, the Gospels, where it is God's will, where you are justified by heaven, and where you will be saved for marrying a man and for sleeping with the man? I, again, Brother Pastor, we simply disagree about it's the It's not approach. an abomination. Paul said... If you're going to live by the jot and tittle of the law, you're going to miss the point. God's law is love. And if you say to someone who is as constitutionally homosexual mm -hmm. as you are constitutionally heterosexual, Harry, you simply can't do it because I can't find you anywhere in the book. And I can find a couple of places where uh, non-gay people made the rules, interpreted the will of God, and they wrote something down in here. And it, I know it's not really about you, Harry. You know, I, I, I don't dispute that uh, the impurity comes from having done these acts in front of idols in the Old Testament. Those texts are about horrible, vile things that were done in front of idols. They don't have any reference, and this is what I mean when I say they don't mean homosexuality. They don't have any reference to a loving, mutually consensual relationship. That's not addressed in the book. That is not condemned in the book. That's, I now, disagree. Well, okay, but let me, let me finish out. We, we do disagree about that. Because I can show you otherwise. Well, you, you talk about a loving, mutual relationship, a justifiable relationship. Mm -hmm. The only justifiable relationship in the scriptures the scriptures plainly say, let me ask you something. Was a man made for the man? Uh, <laughs> Come on, Harry. In my, in my experience, there were some who were right. made for man. 
with your experience. In now let's do with the higher mind. God. God. You love God, Harry? I love him. You love him? I love him. You want to live for him? More than anything else. Are you willing to die for him? I have been close to it, yes. All right, now, let's eliminate your mind and my mind. Right. The mind of God. Mm -hmm. Did God make man for man? Or did he create the woman for the man? Pastor. <laughs> Come on, Harry. You're, shout you're shouting at me now. Hmm? You're shouting at me, and I'm telling you, in all Christian love, yes. in all Christian love, yes, and in all respect for the text, mm -hmm. I know something that the people who wrote the text simply didn't know. Let's now, talk. Oh, now, on. now, okay. it doesn't, you know, I, I you understand. Know they don't know. That's right. You're deeper than them. On one topic that is true for me and for millions of the like, others like You're me. You're deeper than the prophets. I, we, simply deeper than have, the we simply have a different, we have a different knowledge. Come back than, and ask than my we question, did Brother Harry. Right. I don't hurry your mind. Hmm? That's, that's referred to the mind of God. Amen. I ask you, did, did God make man for the man or did God make woman for the man? Eliminate personal feeling. I feel as though. Let's eliminate my feelings and yours. I, I simply think that's a false choice, Pastor. A false choice? It's a false to talk choice. talk about God? Come it's, on, Harry. It's a false choice. You're making me shout. <laughs> <laughs> it's a false choice. And here's why. And here's why. You are asking me, you are asking me if according to the book, if, the, if you're according to the book, if that was my only source of information, is man made for woman? Do you got a source? I would where say God yes. Is that I, of the book? I say to you that God has given us all two gifts that we that we dare not throw back at God. Two gifts. What two I? gifts: the Holy Spirit uh -huh. and our own experience and reason. Mm -hmm. Now, are they more important than what's in the book? No. Then why you keep bringing them up? Because they are as important as is in the book, as as the book, and so I would and the more book just as important as God's and the thinking. book speaks to them both. It is an entirety of relationship with God that I call my Christians, bro my brothers and sisters, to experience. Listen to what you just said. An entire experience with God that's not about a list of rules, a list of rules but a list of guidelines that are given to us in love with the help of the teacher offered us every day. Every day. The teacher? The teacher, Christ, Jesus, Where you through the Spirit. You through the Spirit? He's going to teach us through the text and the Spirit and our experience Will the Spirit and our lead reason. you any direction that contradicts Scripture? If I believed that it contradicted Scripture in its entirety, Brother Pastor, I would still be on my knees about this thing, now, Harry, you begging, for, you begging believe, for forgiveness. Do you believe the Holy Spirit would lead us to go against Scripture in any form? I, I don't. I simply don't believe that what I do does that. Even though the Scripture plainly states mm -hmm. that let a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, to his wife can a man be a wife? No. So, if a man cannot be a wife, if a man cannot be a wife and two men get married, is husband and husband? <laughs> Bring it up, Harry. In our, in our, uh, it <laughs> careful now. In our experience in the gay community, we, we wrestle with language all the time. Okay. And we don't often use, we don't always use husband and husband or wife and wife. Some of us do, some of us don't. Okay. Others uh, believe the word partner to be better because we understand that this is not about domination of one person over another, and that is the source of the word husband, for instance. There's a lot involved in this. To husband is to care for and to own. And to protect. And to protect and mm -hmm. to do all of those things. But that's not our view of, what the, of where the Bible talks about 
what marriage ought to look like, what relationship ought to look like. We believe now that, uh, again, in the entirety of the book and in the entirety of our experience and in all that we have learned, mm -hmm. women should not be subject to men uh, exclusively. But we ain't talking about women. We're talking about two men and, here. And you're asking me about a definition of marriage and wife. And you said, is a man, can a man be a wife? And I would say to you, I don't want to be another man's wife, and I don't want a wife. I want a mutual partner. If the word wife is about subjugation, being beneath, and being a servant to. I'm just not looking for that in a relationship. Is marriage sanctioned by God? I believe that it is. All marriage is sanctioned by God? As opposed to what? If the marriage contradicts the principle of scriptural law, would you say it's sanctioned by God? Well, again, I, I just think it's a circuitous argument. Of course you I really think... don't believe the scriptures. I believe them. And I believe no, all of them. I listen to all of them. And I hear with equal authority, with equal authority, how can you say a scripture that says, let no man call unclean what God calls clean. Is, did God ever call your act clean? I'm telling you, he has told me so in my experience and in the experience of millions of you. other Christian believers who are homosexual. So you mean to tell me you're the only person in this building nope. that God told what you do is clean? Well, I don't know the hearts and minds and, and the experience Did anybody else of, in here, God, tell it was clean? God told you it was clean, sir? Yes. He told you that if what Harry do, if he live with the man, is to clean. Yes. clean okay. Let's see what the Bible says. Proverbs chapter 16 and at verse 2. What is it? All the ways of a man what is it? are clean in his own eyes. But the Lord... But the Lord, but the Lord, weigh the spirits. That's the problem. Say, say the last again. I honestly the didn't Lord hear. The Lord weigh the spirits. That's right. Now, if we have the same spirit of faith, do you, do you feel as though you have the same spirit as the brothers and sisters had in the scriptures? The spirit of God. The proceeding has been a religious discussion between Pastor Gino Jennings of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and Harry Knox of the Freedom to Marry organization. The subject, is it God's will that men should marry men and have sexual intercourse? What is clear about that text is that they came to insult and humiliate those people ah. through sex in public and through humiliating rape. When, they, when all of the men of a city show up at the door and say, send these two guys out, <laughs> we want to have sex with them, they are not talking about my love for another human being in mutuality and concern and care. So if they now, do no, wait, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. Wait, Hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They're saying, all of us are going to take a turn Men on this side, most of you. Men in the, in the choir. Harry's the visitor. God forbid. Yes. But somebody was. Some, some person they believed to be a human being. Now, he was an angel. But they believed to be a human being. <laughs> They're going to put me down here. And first, Dan's going to take his turn. And then this man. And then that man. And then that man. And then that man. And then that one. And then that one. And then that one. Now, Don't you this is... <laughs> bless, bless your hearts. Sorry to have to sorry to have to call it out, but you need the word picture. All right. The word picture is not about consensual loving sex. It is about gang rape. All right. It is about the kind of thing that that conquering armies do. All I'm asking you is now, if it's consensual, even if it's consensual. Is it justifiable by God? And I'm saying to you, Pastor, in all love, if you're asking me, is it justified in the book explicitly, I have already said over and over again, no. Is it in Northern Affection? I don't believe it is. Is, now, is, you, is it normal affection? It, affection? it is normal affection for me. And for, for about 5% of the people in the world. So, not many. But God gave you that attraction to that man. 
I believe it's a gift from God. It certainly has been so for me. It has been my experience. Brother Harry, that that's true. if you say it's a gift from God, Jesus said, believeth on him as the what? Scripture has said. Basically, you gave us opinion, your personal opinion, your personal views, your personal ideas. And we believe what's written. Amen. I often tell viewers if a minister is going to stand before you and talk to you about Jesus, talk to you about heaven, talk about God, then he should be able to refer you to what is written. Right. If you're not going to have the Bible in your churches, take your Bible and throw them out of your churches. Yeah. That's right. Now, you, 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 you minister to people. I do, not in an official capacity, but it has, it has been my task to do so through the years. You use the Bible? Yes. Why? Because it is normative for us all. It is the Word of God. It's the oh, only thing we have to reveal God to us, and it's powerful. How can I, you I say love it. It's the Word of God, and yet you keep telling me what your beliefs are contradicts the Word of God. What I'm saying to you, Brother Pastor, Amen. now I'm going to say it one more time, and then let's, let's don't go over this again, because I think we're just wearing it out. We simply disagree, and, and it's all right with well, me. Well, the thing that that but, no, 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 no. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. What I reject about how you are characterizing my belief, and I need to be clear about this, All is right. that I don't believe in the Bible and that I don't value it over everything else that we have as a source for wisdom and, and, and uh, discernment. I simply do, and you can't say whether I do or don't. You said yeah, Paul don't know what he's talking about. I didn't say that. Well, I, hang on, let me back up. I said Paul didn't know about me and people like me when he wrote about that thing. He wasn't inspired text. to say what he said. I believe that it has value for us, but I believe that the whole book of Romans says we should be listening to the Spirit. We should not be listening to our own biases. This is what you were doing. We should not be listening to our I own asked, biases. When you read the book of Romans, I asked you, did you believe it? You said absolutely not. I don't believe that Paul understood anything about... Paul don't understand it? Paul, about the homosexuality? He did not understand, have any concept about a loving, mutual relationship between two men any more than you or any of the, of the heterosexual men in this audience could say that you could sit down and write about that. Was that Paul talking or was it God talking through Paul? I believe that God spoke through Paul in the entirety of the message of the book. Mm -hmm. So if God spoke through Paul, it was God that said they tried to change the natural use? Uh, I, believe Paul was, I, I believe Paul has reference there to idolatrous, uh, idolatrous? To idolatrous things in addition to, uh, to trying to get people to uh, see something as unclean and impure uh, by as the what? Jewish law. Mm -hmm. And it was. Again, I haven't disputed that. I have, simply said, I have simply said, there, according to the Jewish law, it was. And according to Paul's understanding at the time, it was. And I am saying that the Scriptures lead me to understand that my Lord, who is alive in my life today... You're speaking in reference to Jesus. Jesus. He's in your life. Who is in my life today and guiding me, okay. is also speaking as he spoke to people in the New Testament church. Mm -hmm. A new thing. A new thing. A new thing. And I'm bold to let's, do it because... Let's see, is it a new thing? Amen. Let's, let's see, is it a new thing? Mm -hmm. Now remember what you just said. The Lord is speaking to you a new thing. Let's see according to what the Lord said. Is it a new thing? In Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Listen. And we'll begin in verse 9. What is it? The thing that hath been. The thing that hath been. It is that which shall be. It is that which shall be. And that which is done. Holy. The thing that hath been. Hath been. So if you say the prophets and the apostles didn't understand homosexuality, homosexuality is incorrect. Because they said the thing that hath been. It is that which shall be. See, you came later. Which lets you know that the way men thought today, they thought yesterday. That's right. So it has been. Has been. Listen. And that which is done. That which is done. Is that which shall be done. And. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything? 
anything? Listen at the scriptures. Is there anything? Is there anything? Whereof it may be said, see, this is new. <laughs> is it? Now that, now that contradicts you. It does. It, it does. plainly asks a question. Is there anything? Whereof it may be said. That it may be said. See. See. This is new. This is new. You can't come and say Jesus is giving something new to you. Ain't no. you? Ain't you your community? No, you cannot. And, and I, I submit to you again in, in all, in all uh, humility and, and love. These were the scriptures that Paul had available to him. No, this, yes, yes, Ecclesiastes. Yes. These were the scriptures Paul had available to him when he said to the church at Jerusalem, there's a new thing. There's a new thing. He said, I know what the scriptures say behind us. He would say in other places, I know them better than any of you. You know, he claimed that for himself. He said, I have been in them, I've studied. He had the benefit of education when so many of his readers did not. Mm -hmm. And he studied the scriptures. And he said, there is a new thing Where? here. These Gentiles ought to be able to, to, to be a part of the church mm -hmm. in the same way that we Jews who have heard the good news should be. And it sounded to those Jewish Christians as, as strange and as, as weird and as unnatural as what I'm saying to you. But Paul said, the Spirit of God is speaking to us and he's not found just in the dry text of the law. If the law is not filled with the Spirit, and that Spirit, a Spirit of love in Christ Jesus, you're going to go astray. The law will trip you up. Shouldn't the, the righteousness of the law be fulfilled in us? As much as we can do it. And it is our task to seek that in prayer and, and, and supplication and time before God and, what about and time with the Spirit and all that always and, and always in dialogue with the Spirit. And, and Brother Pastor, there's just not anything else for me to say to, about that today. We have a different view. I, I, I honor scripture. yours. Yours is, I think, simply scriptural. Yours is opinionated. Mine in, involves not just opinion, but the reason that God gave me, the experience God has given me, and not just experience that is selfish, You're saying but, but experience in, in community with so many others, both gay and non-gay, who are also coming to this same understanding by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, in dialogue with the scriptures always, always, and listening clearly, clearly to Christ. I, I begging Christ to, to tell Christ, us. Harry. I, the same way you do, Brother Pastor. I get down on my knees after I have studied. I study routinely. Mm -hmm. I get down on my knees, at least uh, figuratively, not always literally. All right. Sometimes literally. Mm -hmm. And I sit in the presence of God and I ask the questions that I need to ask. I, I listen in silence, trying to hear what God wants to say. Also, I worship in a community that wrestles with hard questions. And I listen to my pastor, who shares wonderful insights to me, challenging insights, insights that say to me, lately, Harry, you're not giving enough money. Fundamentally important. Fundamentally important question. You're not uh, husbanding the gifts that God has given you effectively. I was convicted a few weeks ago under her preaching like that, that I wasn't giving enough, that I had not trusted God with caring for me But you enough. wasn't convicted about sleeping with the man. And, but I was not. But and what I'm man. saying to you, Pastor, uh, what I'm saying to you is, no, and, and I don't tell, find another, I don't know another way to say it. When he wasn't convicted, when he told me he was not convicted, I can go to the Bible and find that. You and can, I'm going to go to it. You can find, well, and... Uh, if you want to keep doing it, we can keep uh, going I, through the, I, through the I, path. I got to deal with the Bible. I got to. But to say you're a Christian and don't deal with the Bible, why, well, good night. No need to go to church. Hang out all night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, makes uh, sense, doesn't it? it, it well, it, makes a, it yeah. makes a kind of sense. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make full sense. No. It doesn't. It oh. doesn't match the relationship, the relationship that I have with God and with my fellow Christians uh, that allows me to uh, disagree with you 
and to agree with some, to disagree with some of those same folks about other things, mm -hmm. and agree with you about some things, and, and not feel fully embraced by the love of Christ. So you're saying a man can be Christ-like, he can be like Christ, or strive to be like Christ, and still sleep with the man. It is my uh, conviction. Lean into that and understand. It is my experience, mm -hmm. and it has been a gift from me, from God, uh, that that has been true. Can a man smoke, be a Christian, uh, and drink and party, and, you know? I, I Get take high off I right. take very seriously the the scripture that you read earlier about cleansing the temple and and making yourself as fully available to Christ as possible. I take that very seriously. So if a man land with a man, is he making himself fully available to Christ? Yes. I have know to, that's let not me put true. the question. Yes. No. You know I that's not I true. know it's true. I'm gonna look you in the eye and say it is true. You know that's not the truth. Now let me ask you in return. Amen. When you, no, when you, when you make love with your wife, yeah. is it a spiritual experience in addition to a lot of other things? Is it not a spiritual When I lay with my wife, I'm not laying with no spirit. Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is not a spiritual experience. my stand up, Sister Jenna. Stand up, Sister Jenna. Now, come here, <laughs> Bless, bless your heart. Thank you for <laughs> going through that. You trying to tell me that you're having a spiritual experience when you're laying with the band? I'm going to tell you that, that I uh, loved a man who is now dead in such a profound way, and he me, that yes, I believe the Spirit of God was with us when we made love. Was it always or was it always a religious? Like about God. Was it always a religious experience? Not always. That's the great But God. were there times when it when it transcended? What? I hope, gosh, I hope for all well, of you and for you, Pastor. I hope for you. You was under the anointing. It, yeah, absolutely. My Lord. My absolutely. Lord. Absolutely. What it did you get from God? <laughs> Just a minute. Just a minute. What did you get from God Almighty? Because when you're saying that you was anointed when you was doing this, you're saying God sanctioned it. Right. What did you get from God when you lay with a man? The gift of mutual love and care that was... Oh, you got that was, was fleshy satisfaction. You don't know that, Brother Pastor. You just simply cannot say that about me. I can me. say that about this book. I can, we're talking about about me at this point now, and don't and please be please be careful. Please you, be careful. You don't tell. You I'm telling you, you cannot that you say were about anointed me. Anointed by God when you were laying with a man. I have been. All you got to do is show me someone in here that was now every, like you were. Every time, no. I'm okay, telling you about just my experience. One time. Please stop interrupting me. Please stop interrupting me. This is so fundamentally important. I'm talking about a relationship that was as important to me as your relationship with Sister Jennings. And this is, this is fundamental. But so we're talking about a commandment I, that God allow here, Harry. What, what I experienced with him was so much beyond the norm of the way people treat each other selfishly. People usually treat each other selfishly in this world. He didn't treat me selfishly. He treated me the way God treats me. He treated me the way God treats me by, by reaching out to me in love and care and mutual concern. Concern that was all about me and not about his needs. And I reached out to him in the same way. Didn't happen every time. Would that it were. Would that I were that good. 
uh, a husband, a, a, a partner. Would that I were. But when it was wonderful and right, it was exactly that. Spirit it was a it was a spiritual the spirit connection. Spirit of God was in it. Absolutely. Peter, let's see what the God. Bible says. Second Peter chapter two will begin at verse six. Yes. Sir. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemned them with an overthrow. Condemned them with an overthrow. Making them an example. Making them an example unto those unto those that after should live ungodly. After should live ungodly. And deliver just lot. Deliver just lot. Vexed. Vexed. With the filthy conversation of the wicked. What you have with me and now is a filthy conversation. You gonna blame God and say that he got you involved with the anointing to lay with the man and then he gonna tell us that it's wrong for man to lay with man by scriptural text. Well, that, that text is so. That text doesn't say that Sodom was destroyed because of homosexuality. It just doesn't. It tells us that, that Lot was vexed. For that righteous man. That righteous man. Dwelling among them. Dwelling among them. And seeing and hearing. Seeing and hearing. Vexed his righteous soul. Vexed his righteous soul. From day to day. By with, what? with their unlawful deeds. Their unlawful deeds. And their deeds were unlawful. To, hu it? to humiliate another person. To humiliate another person in any way. Were they, they wanted to penetrate a man, correct? Uh, they, they did. They wanted to penetrate a man. They wanted to penetrate a man. But they did not want to do with him what my partner and I do together. They're what? simply two different things. They wanted to rape a man. Now, let me ask you this in return. Go Again, ahead, sir. Let me ask you this in return. Go ahead. What does it say about Lot that he would offer his daughters or that householder in Gibeah that he would offer his daughter to people to be raped instead of a man. What does it say about it? What do we take away from that? If, if that story is normative in its every jot and tittle, what does that say to women? Well, it says something to women and to men. Mm -hmm. And it, it talks to men, it talks to women, and it shows you the standard of God, the order of God. That's right. One, yes, they wanted to do a group rape thing. Right. Two, Lot wanted to eliminate the group rape, rape taking place by compromising, by offering his daughters. Right. The natural use of it. Mm -hmm. But they actually coming in the very fact that they wanted the men. Lot respond was, Not don't so wickedly. do so wickedly. So the act of rape with a man, it's wicked. If a man rape a woman, it's wicked. That's wicked. But if a man marry a man, it's wicked. But you've taken but you've made a leap there, and that's the problem. And what's that? You have made the leap to marriage and to consensual love between two men that is simply not in that story. That story says it is wrong to rape another human being. It, well, what it says is it's wrong to rape rape a, a man. Now, you've got to get over to judges before you find out that it's wrong to rape a woman, too. But it, but it says it's wrong to rape a man. It doesn't say a word about me and my lover in there. It so simply does it not. It doesn't? No. So Paul didn't even deal with it either. I, I, I'm not saying that Paul didn't deal with it and that Paul did not. I have said to so you. So the scriptures did deal with it. I have said to you the, in three places. In the Leviticus Code, in the Holiness Code, in Leviticus, in those two texts, mm -hmm. and in the Romans text, uh, it is clear that homosexual sex was not sanctioned as a part of the, the experience that, that was recommended to, to Christian people. So please tell me, why is, did God sanction you and didn't sanction nobody else? I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, I don't think you're that special. That, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't claim it on that basis. So that's, that's what it sounds like you're doing. I, you, you give, you're talking to me like God has given the gay community special sexual rights. Right. That's exactly what you're telling me. That's right. Because if God has already spoken, mm -hmm. 
He's already spoken in the Torah, if he's already spoken in the gospel, and yet what you're saying is no way in Old Testament or new in any form of justification. And then for you to tell me that Jesus talks to you and telling you things that he did not tell nobody else, you're telling me that God has given you and the gay community a special sexual right. And, and I am saying to you, no, that's not true. What's the difference? Because it's not special. We are not asking for something, that, any consideration that any community should not be given. Let me go back to, to my argument a minute. Go ahead, sir. Nobody reads the passage in Judges and says, because men raped that woman, heterosexuality is wrong. Okay. People don't make that leap. And it's not fair or just in the eyes of Christ or anyone else to make that same kind of leap with the passage in Genesis about Sodom, about gay folks. It's, it's circuitous thinking that serves your purpose, but it doesn't, it doesn't act out of love for me. It doesn't, it doesn't look at me and say, Harry, I know that there is something that is true about you and your life. I see the spirit in you in every other aspect of your life. And I believe that you care about God and love God incredibly importantly without any other re reservation. And I got to wrestle with this. It says, this is a blanket prescription. It's clear as day. Enough said. And, and you say that's what I'm saying. I believe it. That's how I feel. I'm not saying. And, and that's how that's people hear. Going. That's how people hear what you're what you're saying. And I'm saying to you that uh, that the 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 spirit speaks to us through a story like that one in Judges to say you can't just treat women any old way. The twelve tribes. The twelve. The twelve. The twelve tribes of Israel rose up to say to these people, women matter too. Mm -hmm. That was a new thing. Okay. That was a new thing then. Because women didn't matter that much. They were owned by their husbands. They, were, they had uh, virtually no power. And, <laughs> and yet here's this story that is horrible to read. And yet when we hear it, I hear it as, oh my gosh, there's a new thing there. These people rose up to defend women. That's new. That's powerful. The text doesn't say it. The text doesn't say, and therefore women are now honored forever in the same way that men are. But the Spirit says it. The Spirit takes me to a place that I wouldn't have thought about had I not encountered and lived with that text. And it, and it causes me to, to wrestle with it and pray. When I look at the, at the Romans text, and Paul says, these people have been doing some really ugly things over there. That, you know, these people that are not you are doing some things that we don't agree about and we don't understand. He says it, he throws it out as, as you would in a sermon in this church, perhaps. I, I think you probably would. Not out of particular care about that issue, but it would, it would roll off your lips, you know, as one of the long list of, of problems like smoking and drinking, and crack use and adultery and lots of other things. And his point is, we all understand that. He says, it's just not natural. We all understand it that way. It's the common community understanding. And I'm saying to you, Brother Pastor, as a brother in Christ, I'm begging you on my own behalf and also on behalf of my sisters and brothers who are gay, we're asking you, don't just stop with the common understanding. Because the common understanding is always going to lead, and this is why it is always about women, or always about uh, people of color, or always about gay folks, or always about the oppressed. The Spirit of Christ is leading us to say, gee, one more time, I got to wrestle with whether or not I'm the oppressor or the oppressed. And if I'm looking for ways to justify what's always been, and I can't say why this is evil other than that it's always been said to be, 
If God say a thing is evil, isn't that good enough? It is if God really unequivocally says it, and I'm saying to you... So you're saying he didn't? And I'm saying to you, the things that we treat as unequivocal in, in the book today are not unequivocal in the same way, except when we talk about homosexuality. Are you saying about homosexuality in the scriptures, when God said he made the woman for the man, and if a man lie with mankind as he do with the woman, what, how they both should be killed, and how Paul come along and say how they change the truth of God into a lie. God is not saying none of this. Just God, Moses and God Paul. Sa no, God says that, but he also says if, if you and Sister Jennings have sex while she has her menstrual period, you also should be killed. All right. Now, that is as normative as the piece that applies to me and mine in there. And, and we simply don't use that kind of judgment. We go to a higher judgment, not than the scripture. We go to Christ idea? himself. Okay. And we say to Christ, gee, this doesn't, this doesn't match up. Any, you know, this is hard. What are we going to do? And in my experience, Jesus says... <laughs> What did Jesus tell you? I would like to know. Jesus says to me about homosexuality, Harry, this is a gift that God has given you. Jesus said that to you? Absolutely. In my prayers, in my spiritual life, it is clearly so. And, Book and Jesus, Jesus, has that, said, Jesus has said to people who had to make hard decisions like this, look, I know the book says it's okay to have slaves. I, the Spirit, am saying to you, no, it's not. Jesus told you that, Harry? Yes. Book of Ecclesiasticus. Listen at the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 26. Listen. And at verse 14. What is it? A silent. A silent. And loving woman. And loving woman. Is a gift. Is a gift. Of the Lord. Amen. What does the scripture say a loving man is a gift? Well, come on, Harry. you're in a text. No, I need to be quick to say you're you're in a text that I I don't accept as uh, as part of the canon. That's that's outside of the canon that my well, my faith. You say it's outside the canon, but will you please show us anywhere in any scriptural text where a man is a gift from God to another man? Amen. And I'm saying to you again, Pastor. It's not in there. Is it? It's not in there. It's not in there. But, but that's still, not all. I do, because that's not that's the not only right. source that is, is not and cannot be the only source of our, of our faith. Thank you for the dialogue, Brother Thank Harry. you, Brother Harry. All right. Let me put my camera in and let me know how much time I have. All right, we have some more time left. Let me dive into the Bible quickly. How about that? Six minutes I have? 15 minutes, I can rack my balls on the table in 15 minutes and put one of the scriptures right in the corner pocket. That's right. Now listen, viewer. Amen. I want to thank uh, Harry Knox for being here. Let me make it plain to the gay community. One, we don't hate gay people. That's right. Two, we're not trying to put a contract out on gay people. Amen. Three, all I'm asking is one simple thing. Is it God will? Amen. I don't care what Bush stands for. He's on the devil anyway. That's right. I don't care what Kerry stands for. He's on the devil too. Amen. This is not about politics. No. It's not about slaves. No, it's not. It's not about so-called That's right. I don't mind saying that. Amen. And it ain't about crackers either. That's right. It's about God. That's right. Amen. This is about God's God. divine, infallible, perfect law that we cannot make fit us. That's right. The law of God is not designed for you to make it fit you. That's right. You must make all the changes to try.
tried to fit into it. Amen. Why have the scriptures? That's right. If we don't believe them. Amen. That's right. All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. Uh -huh. So if all scriptures are divinely inspired, then no prophet, no apostle wrote anything by his own opinion or by his own suggestion. That's right. What scripture says the holy men of God spake and they was moved by the Holy Ghost or they was moved by the Spirit. That's and right. God moved upon the face of the deep. Amen. God moved upon the prophets and guided their tongues. That's right. That's this right. is why the book says in John, 1st St. John 1 and 1, mm -hmm. in the beginning was the word. Was the word. Hold it. Yes, God bears the title Word. That's right, Lord. Why does God bear the title Word? Those things that never exist came into existence through the usage of speech. Amen. God speak and let it come into being. That's right. The non-existence began to exist. Amen. So God bear the title Word. word. That's right. God used prophecy. Mm -hmm. To bring those things to pass. So if we come late on the scene. Come on, Richard. Amen. If any of us come later. Mm -hmm. Then if God talk to anybody today. Hey, that's right. It cannot contradict the former brothers who was here yeah. yesterday. That's right. That's right. That's right. We got to have the same spirit. Give me that real quick. Yes, Amen. Give me, let me show you an example. You people that says there are three gods today. And you said the Lord revealed to you there's three in heaven. Three separate and distinct personalities. You are saying the spirit is guiding you to contradict the first commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Yes, so to say God is guiding us in a direction that contradict the prophets, Jesus said, thy fool and slow of hearts, believe all what the prophets have said. Jesus advised us. That's right. Believe the prophets. Yes, that's right. Jesus advised us, believe the prophets. Mm -hmm. The apostle come along later and said, be mindful that's right. of, of the, the words word spoken, spoken before. before by the holy prophets that's right. and the commandments of us, the apostles. The apostle said, be mindful. Be mindful. Yes, Lord. If we're not going to respect Amen. what they say, Amen. as they got the revelation from God, mm -hmm. not to respect the prophets, not to respect the apostles That's is right. disrespecting God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen closely. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and at verse 13. Yes. We having the same spirit of faith. Get this. Faith is belief. Mm -hmm. right. And the scripture tells us we have the same spirit of belief. According. According. As it is written. Why, why, why do I refer to the Bible? According as it is written. Where our belief should be. As it is written. Our belief should be according to scripture. What's written? That's right. Not made up, not idea, not opinion. Anything we say about God. Let me, let me toss it at you. We cannot know God beyond, beyond. what's written. That's right. Everything that God wants you to know about him is written. It's written. Amen. Someone say, well, it's a secret. The Bible said the secret things belong to God. That's right. Anything that's secret. That's right. It belongs to God unless God. That's right. And if God want a secret thing known, he reveal it to his servants, the, the prophets. prophets. That's right. And give them a message and a divine revelation to make the secret thing known. That's right. Listen. That's right. We have in the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of belief. According as it is written. According as it is made up. According as it is written. According as it is an opinion. As it is written. A suggestion. As it is written. A idea. As it is written. A thought. As it is written. We got to go by what? As it is written. What's everything thing that's written for time and written for our learning that we do patience and comfort after the scriptures might have hope? That's right. Listen. According as it is written. How do we feel? I believe. I believe what? As it is written, I believe. You gotta believe what? As it is written, I believe. Yes, you gotta do what? 
As it is written, I believe. And when you believe what's written, what would you do? And therefore have I spoken. That's what got my mouth jumping. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's what got my mouth jumping. That's right. That's right. We believe in the God of the prophets. That's right. We believe in the God of the apostles. That's right. Go ahead. They left us the message of God in scripture. Amen. Now if we're not going to believe the scripture. That's right. We cannot be followers of Christ. The knowledge of the commandments. Listen at the scriptures. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 19 and verse 19. What is it? The knowledge of the commandments. The knowledge of the commandments. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Is the doctrine of life. Thank you Jesus. Doctrine right. is written. That's right. How many said I give you a good doctrine. Good doctrine. That's right. To get doctrine if the scripture says all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine. doctrine. To have your doctrine yes, correct, you got to have scripture sure. correct. That's so right. If your understanding of scripture is wrong, your doctrine is wrong. That's right. And therefore you become one that pass mm -hmm. false doctrine, false concepts to give people false hope. That's, hope. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. It is not God's will. No, no. And you that are watching, get this. Amen. And you that are here, get this. Now concerning the things. Concerning the things. Whereof you wrote unto me. That you wrote unto me. It is good for a man. It is good for a man. Not to touch a woman. Not to touch a woman. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. To avoid fornication. But to avoid fornication. That every man. That every man. Have his own wife. Have his own man. Have his own wife. What did God say? Let every man. Have, have his own man. Have his own wife. Amen. What did God say? Let every man have his own wife. We take that. That's right. That's God's law. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. He Doctor took the woman from the rib of the man. That's right. Then formed the body of the woman. Amen. Led her back to the man. That's right. The man declares, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, ye shall be called woman. A man cannot say to another man, you are bone of my bone no, and no. flesh of my flesh. No, listen, no. listen, hold it, listen. If men is going to marry men. Amen. And yet God purpose for children to come in this world. That's right. That's right. Regardless to how much you love to indulge. Amen. Men cannot get men pregnant. That's right. That's right. That's right. So to spill seed within Amen. a man Amen. is an act of corruption. In yeah. fact, you challenging the wisdom of yeah. God. That's right. Thank you. Challenging God's wisdom. That's right. God is the best mind. Yeah. God is the best know. Yeah. He come along Thank and you. make man to be the reflection of God. That's right. And making woman to be the helpmate of the man. That's it. That's it. And then God ordained. Will be in childbirth. That's right. We can't change that. No, no, can't change it. So when men come along, Amen. Laying with men, mm -hmm. as you do with the woman, Amen. Then if that's justifiable, then it's justifiable for someone to lay with animals. That's right. That's right. That's right. God purpose. Yes, Lord. For the population to keep growing. Yes, right. yes, Down women. Let's see what the book says about this. Now in First Esther chapter four and at verse seventeen, it says what? And without women, and without women, cannot men be. Right. Amen. Without women, without women, cannot men be. Cannot man exist. That's right. That's right. Man come from the womb. All men. Listen. In the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 6. All men. Have one entrance. Have one entrance. Into life. Into life. And the light going and out. And the light going out.
going, going out. out. I myself. I what? I myself. Solomon said, I myself. Also am a mortal man. Am a mortal man. Like to all. Like to everybody. And the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. Uh -huh. And in my mother's womb. And my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh. Amen. Amen. It is in no part of the man body. Amen. That God ordained. Amen. For another man. Amen. To get pleasure from. Amen. That's right. Not one part. That's right. That's right. All right, listen. Amen. Amen. It's not one part. Not one part. Thank you. Sir. Of the body of the man. That's right. That God ordained. Amen. For another man to get pleasure from. That's Amen. right. That's the gentleman right. said that he is not convicted. That scripture. Mm -hmm. right. Go back to Romans. Amen. Romans chapter 1. Listen closely. And at verse 21. All right. Because that when they knew God. They knew God. They did not like to retain him as God. They didn't want to recognize him as God. At verse 28. Move quick. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Yeah. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And. To do those things which are not convenient. Yeah. Being filled with all unrighteousness. You better go back up to 22. Move fast. For, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world. Yeah. Are clearly seen. And what? Being understood by the things that are made. Mm -hmm. Even his eternal power and Godhead. And so that they are without excuse. They don't have no excuse. Because that when they knew God. When they knew God. They glorified him not as God. Now if you know God and God is good and God is the savior and God is the keeper and God is the provider and God that's is right. the healer. That's right. But when you don't glorify him as God, that means you don't give him the respect that's due him. That's right. The Bible says with their mouth they profess they know God, but in works they deny him. Yeah. Because that when they knew God. When they knew God. They glorified him not as God. They respect him as God. Neither were thankful. Neither are they thankful. But became vain. It is not the nature of God Amen. that another man play the role of a woman. That's right. That's right. Talk to me. That's right. That's right. That's right. It is not the will of God not that a man play the role. Amen. A man that's let, listen, let me get wrong with you. Go ahead. A man. Go ahead. Whether you're laying with your feet up in the air right. or on your knees like you're bowing to the master. Go ahead. Go ahead. God had never purpose Go ahead. for a man Go ahead. Go ahead. to lay with the man right. as he do a woman. woman. That's right. That's right. You can't name no part of the man body Amen. that was designed for another man. That's right. That's it's right. not designed. Not for another man. Amen. But the Bible plainly states mm -hmm. that the woman was designed for the man. Made for the man. So the Bible say that? Yeah. First Corinthians How chapter did it 11. Say it? Listen at the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 11 at verse 9. What is it? Neither was the man created for the woman. Neither was the man created for the woman. But the woman. But the woman. For the man. You see the woman, your body was designed for man. That's right. Fit the man. That's right. Fit the man. That's right. Man. You have to force entry. Amen. Try to make it work. That's right. That's right. That's right. Make it wrong. Yes, I said it and I meant it. Genesis chapter. I'm not trying to pick on the brother. No. But I must preach what's written. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm sent to do. I'm not sent to give you suggestions and ideas and made up fabricated material. That's right. That's if we're not going to believe the book, then everybody should just pack up and go to hell. What good is it? If we're not going to believe them. Amen. Amen. What good is having scriptures and churches Amen. if you're not going to preach from them? That's right. Close up the church. That's right. That's yes, right. I believe what's written. Believe what's it makes me balk what's written. That's right. I stand firm on what's written. Amen. I utilize what's written. According as it is written. Yes, sir. That's right. 
This is what caused me to challenge any religion in America and abroad. Amen. We don't build on made up things. No, no, no. We build on what's written. That's and when you build on what's written, you build your house upon a rock. That's right. Amen. not a member of your body. It's not a member on your body that God made right. for your own kind. That's right. Are right, you listen to the old man? That's right. It's not a member on the man's body. Amen. Go ahead. God made Amen. for another man. So young men that mm -hmm. struggling with this in middle age and old. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling, Amen. then seek God sincerely. Yes, Lord. That's right. From the heart. Yes. That's right. That's right. One must look at their lust. Mm -hmm. Because your lust will either be for a man or woman. That's right. According to what Paul teaches us by the Spirit, he said they burn, burn in, their lust. in their lust. One toward another. One toward the other. Mm -hmm. Then the scripture tells us who was burning for who. Listen. Uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 27. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. Uh, the Bible's plain. Amen. You leave the natural use of the woman. You left her. Left her. So to tell me Paul didn't have no idea about homosexuality, God speaking through Paul. That's right. See, all scriptures are given by inspiration. That's right. Pastor Paul ain't making up nothing on his own. He's being guided by the spirit of the living God. That's right. The master of all creation. Amen. The sustainer of all worlds. That's right. Listen. And likewise also the men. The men. Leaving the natural use of the woman. There is no other alternative. No. There is no in-between marriages. No in-between marriages. That's right. Man to woman, woman to man, that's God's way. That's right. That's the only true way. That's right. That's I can accept him as a man. That's yes, Lord. But gay behavior, God don't even accept. Amen. Amen. Neither will the church of Jesus Christ. That's right. Because for us to uphold Jesus, <laughs> You got to uphold his teachings. Amen. You can't. You, listen, Christian. All right, Christian. Go ahead. You say you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. Many people out here say they're Christians. That means you're Christ-like. Right. So that means our behavior mm -hmm. balanced out and is equivalent to the behavior of Christ. That's right. Man. So then. That's right. If we going to lay with men. And Jesus hung around a lot of brothers. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's right. Hung around with Peter, John, mm -hmm. James, Amen. and different Bartholomew. That's right. The apostles in the company. That's right. But there was no inordinate lust among them. No inordinate Amen. lust. That's right. Real quick. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. Leave, this is plain, the natural use of the woman. Burned in their lust. They burned in their lust. One toward another. One for another. Men. Men. With. Men. With men. Men with what? Men with men. What are they doing? Working. Working. Don't just stop there. Working what? Working that which is unseen. See, you just can't say working. Right. <laughs> That's right. Because folk may think they mean carpentry or laying brick or brick mixing or it is plumbing. That's right. That's right. Sin, I am not going to try to make sin pleasant. No, no. We're not going to dress it up and put a bow on it. That's right. We're going to call a spade a spade. Amen. Amen. Read quick so I can knock off. Men with men working that which is unseemly. Yes. And receiving in themselves the recompense of the error which was meet. No, it's right to do. And receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. No, it's right to do. Error. You see the language of scripture is right. Error. Error. And a thing 
saying is that error is wrong. Wrong. That's right. The book says error. Error. That's right. Listen. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was me. Yeah. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Yeah. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. When you got a reprobate mind, there is no conviction. That's right. That's right. There's, there's no conviction. Amen. Amen. Book says. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And as a result of a reprobated mind, how did they feel afterwards? To do those things which are not convenient. And what? Being filled with all unrighteousness. Being filled with what's not right? Fornication. Fornication. Wickedness. Wickedness. Covetousness. Co desiring someone else's. Maliciousness. Maliciousness. Full of envy. Full of envy. Murder. Murder. Debate. Debate. Deceit. Deceit. Malignity. Malignity. Whisperers. What is it? Backbiters. Haters of God. Uh -huh. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. As a result? Disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Yeah. Who knowing the judgment of God. If they know God's judgment. That they which commit such things that include homosexuality and everything else that they name that the Bible name here that if you don't stop doing it who knowing the judgment of God you know the judgment of God that they which commit such things what's the result are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do thank them. you for listening brothers and sisters We want to thank uh, Brother Harry Knox for being here. We thank him for coming. Uh, we thank him for taking the time out to have this discussion. Greetings. Uh, this is Brother Dan Thompson of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we've just uh, witnessed a, another discussion between Pastor Jennings and this time uh, the gay community, uh, Brother Harry Knox. Uh, we're going to try, as usual, to get a few comments from those that were in attendance uh, at our meeting today. Uh, what's your name, Brother? Uh, my name is Usman. Uh, where are you from? I'm from South Jersey, right across the bridge in Lindenwall. Hey, tell me what you thought about Pastor Jennings' preaching today. It was, as always, very good. I've always, you know, I've watched Pastor Gino Jennings over five years now, and I've always been very, you know, uh, draw to his preaching because he really preached from the Bible. And majority of, you know, everything he talks about is based on the Bible. So I really enjoy the program. Do you believe that Pastor made a fair presentation of what the scripture speaks about homosexuality in his discussion with Brother Knox? Oh yeah, most definitely because you know everything everything he said was really based on what the Bible says and um, you know I respect Brother Knox, Knox but you know it, it never really states exactly where the Bible says it's okay to be you know gay. So I really believe and I believe that it's not God's will to be you know for men to marry men. Uh, what's your name, brother? Uh, brother Najee Muhammad. Oh, you're a face that we've seen in the past, I presume. That's correct. Uh, give me uh, your uh, feelings or your beliefs on the subject that was discussed between Pastor Jennings today and uh, Mr. Knox. Well, first of all, uh, I am a Muslim, and we do believe in, in the Holy Quran, in the Torah, in the Gospel. And of course, uh, with this subject matter that the pastor was speaking about today, which was four hours, I support it 100%. And I think it was very good. He laid down the foundation, especially in the end. He closed it up very nicely, very nicely. And I appreciate him, and I thank Allah. What's your name? Yes, my name is John Roth. And where are you from? I'm from Minnesota. Tell me what you thought about the, the discussion today in terms of uh, whether or not Pastor Jennings made a good presentation or whether or not Mr. Knox made a fair presentation as to whether or not homosexuality was something that God's will to be done. Right. Yeah, I believe Pastor did an excellent job in uh, referencing the scriptures, uh, sticking to the scriptures, which is where we have our faith and our belief. And uh, scriptures are clearly against homosexuality. Uh, what's your name, Sister? Sister Green. And where are you from? Jacksonville, Florida. Tell me what you thought about uh, what was discussed today. Well, I thank God for Pastor Jennings, and it was a great service. May the Lord bless all the gay people. I, they, I keep them in my prayer. But it was a wonderful message sent out to everyone all over the world, not even just the gay people, but also people that's just got them in their family, which I do. Do you think Pastor Jennings made a very clear case in terms of God being displeased with that behavior? He's, he was very, very clear. Very clear. Bless him, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you so much. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. You have been watching the Worldwide Truth of God television program with the Apostle and Servant of God, Pastor Gino Jennings of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. This program is intended to enlighten and edify you about the Holy Scriptures and the will of God for the salvation of your soul. Give careful consideration to the many subject matters of this program and join us each week for the truth. Peace be unto all. The proceeding was a paid program brought to you by the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. The opinions expressed were solely those of the sponsor.